Okay, um, welcome to Free Association. Uh, you're listening to Revolution Radio, and it's uh, it's four o'clock. It's just after four o'clock in the UK, uh, which means it's eleven o'clock on the East Coast in the States. Uh, Free Association is here every Saturday at eleven a.m. on Studio B on Revolution Radio, and uh, on YouTube. I usually post it on YouTube about an hour or so after the show finishes. Um, I'm going to see if I can find other other places to put the show as well. I'm using the show as part of my podcast, so you can find find it on the podcast as well at, at uh, radioprojects.podomatic.com. If you miss any of them, they'll, they'll, they'll all be there. The archives are on Revolution Radio as well, um, and they're all free. So if I say anything interesting that you want to remind yourself about those are the places to find it um i don't have a, a topic lined up i'm in a bit of a strange mood today so I, so i didn't do topic um i had a, a not very much sleep last night so i i ended up listening to a blues show blues radio show at five o'clock this morning and i hadn't been to sleep so i fell asleep about six and woke up again about half 12. So I've had about six hours sleep. I've had enough sleep to keep me going, but uh, not in the right place in the day, really. I'd have preferred it to be overnight. Can't be helped, though. That's just the way things are at the minute. Um, I'm much more on American time than I am UK time. Partly because Revolution Radio, partly because... uh, I'm just automatically tuned to California for some reason. I always have been. I've had like this this connection to California for a long time. I don't know why. Maybe maybe my mother was listening to to the mamas and the papas and and that sort of stuff when I when I was in the womb. I don't know. That would be about the right time. Sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven. I was born in sixty five, so maybe. Maybe she was listening to that sort of stuff. I don't know, but I've got a connection to California for some reason, and I'm tuned to the United States. So if I've got nothing else to do, my my body clock shifts into U.S. time, and then I find it difficult to get out of U.S. time again. But as soon as I get a job and get working again, I'll have to be up and, up and about at 9 o'clock in the morning. I won't, won't have the luxury of of being awake all night. So I'm discovering discovering new things all the time, though, because I've got all this time on my hand when there's nothing else to do. I'm on the internet a lot. And uh, I've discovered Podbean, which is a, a podcasting platform. I do my podcast at Podomatic. I want to talk about uh, the last couple of weeks that I've been posting there. Uh, just because it's it's where my attention is at the moment, so it might be useful to somebody. There might be something in what in what I've been doing that that somebody can take a useful thing from. So I'll talk about it for ten fifteen minutes and see how we go. Uh, I did have I did have a a documentary about Hawkwind lined up, and then there's been a conversation in the chat room about bands playing on the back of trucks, which is exactly what Hawkwind did. For years and years and years, outside of uh, festivals, they they used to do uh, free gigs outside of paid for festivals uh, in in the early seventies. So there's some synchronicity in that. I might play some of that as I go along. Probably 20, 20, 25 minutes of it, depending on how how long I talk about the podcast, really. So let's let's go for that. Let's see what what I can talk to you about. So. I set up this podcast about two, three weeks ago. Didn't do very much with it for the first week. And then I started posting uh, the radio show, my recording of the radio show uh, on there and decided I was going to do a daily podcast. Now, a daily podcast isn't the same thing as a radio show. So the radio show is an hour. Doing something daily. Uh, I wanted to start with something that I knew I could, 
I could make consistent. So I've started with 10 minutes a day as my target for content, which which I don't find particularly difficult to do. And I can I can record on my phone and then just upload to Podomatic and it's a fairly easy system. So I don't really leave the flat, the house at the moment for various reasons, but I'm, I'm, when I'm out and about, I can record in the park if I'm in the, the park or if I'm sat in Times Square, which is the biomedical center in Newcastle, then I can record there as well. I found when I was re recording radio shows there that the wind distorts my voice, but uh, hopefully I can find a spot in the in the corner where the wind doesn't distort my voice. I'm hoping that, that I can do radio shows out there in the summer. But it, it depends on the on the temperature, obviously the amount of sunshine and the amount of wind, whether it's going to work technically or not to do the radio show from out there. I've done guest slots before from from Times Square, from the center of life, it's what it's called. It's a, a big biomedical center run by the university here. Um, they're doing anti-aging anti research and dementia research and that type of thing. Uh, that's based there, I think. Uh, the university set it up. I think there's two or three universities involved and they get government funding for the research. So it's, a, it's an interesting place. I'm not associated with it really because I'm not really a biomedical man. I prefer to do the holistic version, but uh, some of what they're doing is interesting. Anyway, back to the podcast. Uh, I started with with the the intention of doing ten minutes a day regularly and uploading the radio show, which I've achieved for the last two weeks. So that's that's basically what I've done. It's been more than 10 minutes, but I'm doing 10, 10 or 15 minute blocks simply because it's it's easier for people to listen to 10 or 15 minute blocks. It seems to be reasonably attractive to people. Not that I've got a huge amount of listeners or anything, but I went from number 2,100 and something when I first started, and I'm up to number 401 now, and that's in two weeks of regular posting. So there's about a hundred people either downloading or playing the podcast every day, which I think is all all right for for two weeks work. I think that's pretty good for two weeks work. And I've got some of the numbers here. I'll describe what Podomatic gives me as statistics because it's interesting what they're giving me and it, it's exactly the right statistics for me. So on the on the analytics page, they gave me they give me the number of plays, the number of downloads, the number of likes, and the number of embeds. So the number of people that have copy pasted the podcast so they can do it on the, on their own site or whatever. It gives me the number of playlists, the number of followers. Actually, I've lost a follower from yesterday, but I, but there was there was only one there anyway. So. Uh, the number of comments, the number of visits to the page, and then it gives me an overall rank and a category rank. Now, so I didn't have any real targets for the downloads and plays, likes, embeds, playlists, none of those things I had targets for. But in my head when I started, I decided I wanted to be num in the top five of the category that I chose. I chose the spirituality category. Even though it's a, it's quite a broad podcast, I'm not limiting myself to spirituality on the podcast. But uh, I chose spirituality as a category and decided I want to be in the top five. And I'm, I'm not worried about the overall rank. As long as I can get into the top five in spirituality, then, then I'm a happy man. Very happy man, in fact. And I'm at the moment I'm in at number twelve, so that's in two weeks. So I'm getting quite close, which is why I'm excited about it and why I want to talk about it, because it's something that's uh, it's the right time for me to be doing this. That's what it feels like. 
So I've got, a, I've got a good feeling about it. My gut feeling tells me that the way the, the, way the analytics are set up, I'm, I'm used to working in a call centre. So I'm used to working to, to targets where you've got to do a certain number of phone calls a day. You've got to have a certain number of uh, appointments per day. Then you've got to have a certain number of confirmed appointments in the week and a certain, sometimes a certain number of sales for the month. Uh, so I'm used to, I've been given targets like that for years in the call centre. It's a home improvement call centre, so it's double glazing, windows, it's windows conservatories, kitchens, bathrooms. Uh, at one point we were doing extensions, but they don't do those anymore. Uh, sunrooms they do. Uh, at one point we were doing solar panels as well, but we don't do those anymore. Um, I don't work there anymore, but uh, they they change their products and they change the way they do things. Every now and again, the product mix changes. And then they, the way the commission structure works and the way the targets work changes when the products change. So I'm used to, I'm used to working to targets is kind of the point I'm making. So in my head, I think in that way. So when I start a podcast, I need to set a target so that I can make sure that I'm being consistent, persistent, and getting some kind of momentum going with it. And if I can see, I can see in the figures that there's momentum there. So initially, when I started, I was I was labeling, I was titling. The podcast, just episode one, episode two, whatever. And that's changed slowly over the last couple of weeks. So I've started playing about and being a bit, bit more creative with the with the titles of these things. So I'll give you an idea of some of the some of the titles of the podcasts that I've posted over the last uh, what over the last week, say. So as a on the, on the 6th of April, which is about about four days ago, exactly four days ago, I posted a just a seven minute seven minute piece titled "A Conversation About Symbolic Hierarchy." And then on the next day, I titled the piece "An Epigenetic Theory of Evolutionary Psychology and a Lobster Thought Experiment." Then on that same day, the next one I did was that was a five minute piece, just just me talking off the top of my head. All of these things are. The next one is eight and a half minutes, and it was based on uh, an encounter I had with Facebook fact checking, uh, where they I posted a video and they they flagged it as false information. Uh, well, it was a video of of. Dr. Tess Laurie being interviewed by Dr. John Campbell and talking about ivermectin. So I questioned that on Facebook and then I recorded a podcast about questioning it on Facebook and uh, I titled that, How Can a Meta-Analysis of 25 Health Studies Using an Approved Procedure Be False Information? And it's an it's an eight and a half minute piece. Uh, the same day, so there was three three podcasts really. It's the same podcast, just broken into three sections. On the same day, I posted fifteen minutes uh, entitled "Questions About Facebook Fact Checking." So you can see there's a theme. There was a theme to the first few. And I, I was enthusiastic about talking, so it was easy for me to talk about that particular topic. And then on the same day, I posted a, a question about about human evolution, about evolutionary psychology and epigenetics, uh, titled "Are Humans Being Mind Controlled by Lobsters?" I thought was quite a clever title. 
um, and, a, and a good question. And it was just a, that was a response to Jordan Peterson. Uh, Jordan Peterson's been talking for years about lobster hierarchies and territoriality and how humans are their behavior is the same basically uh, I question that uh, it turns out the humans and lobsters have got a common evolutionary ancestor but but they're not part of the same evolutionary chain uh, so I can I can legitimately question what he's saying uh, I took a slightly different tack on this particular piece it's four minutes so it was just me speaking off the top of my head asking a question about whether jordan peterson was was accurate or not uh, and that it, part of that part of the thought process that brought that up was me watching teen wolf endlessly for the past three months or whatever it's been i've got through six seasons now i just finished season six yesterday And uh, the wisdom of Teen Wolf has been highly influential on me for the last three months. Uh, I've enjoyed it immensely. Uh, entertaining Holcomb is the best way to to talk about Teen Wolf. Anyway, so that particular podcast got 19 players and five downloads. So not a huge number. None of these things are huge numbers. The Epigenetic Theory podcast got 26 players and 18 downloads. Well, you, you've got to remember this is in two weeks. So it's that's not bad for two weeks. That's, uh, what's that, 36, 44, 44 interactions for, for a five-minute piece. So, with with the the idea of doing ten minutes, is that I can I can structure things very t and be very targeted, which means that I can use targeted headlines and targeted hashtags on each section. So it's like doing a radio show, but doing it in four sections, in effect, and that's that's really what what this podcast builds up to be so it's over over three days or four days if i'm doing 15 minutes a day it works out at, at the equivalent amount of content as a radio show so it's not too stressful i don't find it particularly stressful i've started reading news articles a little bit the last yesterday particularly i read read two two or three news articles from the Daily Telegraph, uh, and that was my podcast for the day. It was just commenting on the on the news articles. So a diff like a different structure to the radio show, but because it's 10, 10 or fifteen minute blocks, I can play with it. I can experiment with it, and experiment with the headlines, and experiment with the hashtags, and experiment with where I'm posting it see how much how much interaction i get with with different places so the numbers are the key to the whole thing really uh which brings me to pythagoras pythagoras but by, by way of podcasting so at some point i'm going to do a a conversation with a friend of mine in edinburgh about pythagoras uh for a project she calls i can't remember what she calls it Philosophy for Dummies wasn't what she called it. What was it? She, she used a different phrase. I don't know, but it's a it's a beginner's philosophy conversation, basically. So I was going to talk about Pythagoras with her. Um, Pythagoras is the main idea is all is number. Uh, Pythagoras was a, a pre-Socratic philosopher, lived about. 2500 maybe 2600 years ago off the top of my head and he was vegetarian he set up he set up a little commune in italy craton 
I think it was. And uh, and the, that particular community was vegetarian. And they were kind of, they were, it was a, a mystical, like a mystical philosophy based around numbers, based around the, the mystical qualities of numbers. And numbers have still got mystical qualities today. We're just, uh, we're just a bit more precise about it. Uh, which is why I find this podcast analytics so interesting. So this really is Pythagorean philosophy, uh, using Podomatic as an example. The magic of numbers. So because of the numbers, because there are numbers there, I'm enthusiastic. And because I'm enthusiastic, I'm consistent. And because I'm consistent, the podcast's got momentum. And because the podcast's got momentum, I'm enthusiastic. So it's a it's a a circle of positive feedback all the way down the line. And that's because of the numbers. That's because I've got something in front of me that I can see and that then that motivates me. Uh, yeah, so that's what I want to say about the podcast. Uh, it's interesting. I'll probably do Every now and again, I'll do a, a report on the numbers because it's, it is something that absolutely fascinates me. And if I can find a way to get more than about 100 interactions, then, then I'll be happy. I've, I'm, I've got to raise, I've raised my target to 200 interactions. Yeah, uh, Mitty's asking me a question in the chat room, which I've just spotted. So I've just got back to the chat room after my little thing. Yeah, I do record on the phone, Mitty. Um, and it's, all, it's okay. It works reasonably well. Uh, the quality's not marvellous, but for for speaking, for, for a podcast, it's all right. And I, I'm in I'm in my my apartment anyway, so quite often I've got the neighbours are a bit noisy sometimes, and I've had uh, I've had workmen uh, changing doors. They're changing the front doors on the apartments. So there was there was four days last week where where there was banging and hammering and drilling going on, which means I couldn't record in the mornings. And I had to do my recordings in the afternoon. Oh, that's another point. Yeah, the <clears throat> most of the interaction I'm getting is from the United States on the podcast. So there are people this I know there are people listening in France, Germany, uh where else? Australia, New Zealand, Qatar, I think I saw on the on the list as well. So there's, there's people listening all over the world, but primarily the interaction I'm getting is the states at the moment because of because of the way that I'm I've been because of the timing of how I've been posting it I think. So for me, three o'clock is late after, obviously late afternoon, but for the states, it's mid morning, and I've been, that's that's when I've been starting to record. So I record late afternoon here and post it to mid-morning in the States, which gives me a good 10 hours to promote what I've, what I've just posted. Yeah, you can record on the, on the phone, Mitzi. It's... Uh, there's not very much bass comes through recording music. I've used my phone to record music off and on for years and posted on YouTube, but it uh, it tends to knock out the bass and there's too much treble on there. But it's all right. For, it's all right for speech. Definitely, I would use the phone for speech. All right, let me. Let me post the 
the link. Now that I've been talking about it for half an hour, I should really post the link, shouldn't I? So let me do that. I'll just remind people that Revolution Radio is listener supported. Uh, we're all volunteers. So if you do feel like making a donation, uh, you'll find that there's a a tab at the top in the menu when you get to revolution.radio. So and I've just posted the link to to my podcast in the chat room. If anybody wants to have a look, feel feel free. Uh, a lot of my activity now is is at the podcast. Uh, so I'm going to stick to one hour a week at Rev Radio. I was going to I was going to open up Rev Radio, but for the moment I think I'll go. I'll do the podcast because I'm I've got enthusiastic now that I've tested it, and I, I want to do things that I'm enthusiastic about that I'm that I'm not hitting resistance to. And and there's a clear run with the podcast. I've got the numbers, and I know how I wanted to go. And it's just a matter of promoting. One thing I learned by one thing I learned from from the home improvements industry is that the doing the doing the actual home improvements is only about forty percent of the business, and the other sixty percent of the business is marketing. They've got a huge marketing operation. Obviously, the call center. Uh, they do TV advertising. They do radio advertising. So sixty percent of the business is is marketing, and forty percent is actually dealing with fitting the fitting the products. So I think podcasting is probably about the same. It's about forty percent recording the audio, and sixty percent marketing the marketing the podcast. At least that's that's how I'm looking at it at the moment. Until I get some actual figures. I'm just taking the figures from home improvements and kind of moving them over to podcasting as a place to start. And then when I get the actual amount of time that I'm spending in marketing and the time I'm spending in recording as a percentage, then I'll know exactly what it is. All right, we're halfway through, so I'm going to have a look for this this Hawkwin documentary that I was going to play from YouTube. Let me do that because there was a conversation about music music outdoors on the back of a truck. It seems appropriate that I that I can play this because I was thinking about playing again, playing it anyway. So let's see what I can't remember what it was called, but if I just put in. I should pull it up. Yeah, there was one F bomb about four minutes in. So what I'm going to do is try and try and talk over the top of it. Let me share my screen. There's some very respectable rock and rollers out there that cite Hawkwind as a major influence in them. John Lydon from the Sex Pistols, he said there would have been no Sex Pistols if it wasn't for Brainstorm. All the punk bands, they were looking to Hawkwind as a role model, really. It was like Star Trek with long hair and drugs, yeah. I mostly drummed in the news. Oh, I got so hot and sweaty, I was just like a race horse when I was... Right, I'll move this Richard to five. Sending you to hell. And I'm going to miss Lemmy's F bomb, hopefully. With the management company. And in walked this bunch of reprobate. And I can just let it play that way. ...of war between fellowship and sole ownership. He was the first of almost 50 musicians to pass through Hawkwind over the last 37 years. So Hawkwind was a band that was formed in, in Ladbroke Grove in London in the late 60s. I think they were originally called Band X. 
and then Hawkwind Zoo, and then they became Hawkwind. Uh, I'll just let the documentary play. Uh, you've got Nick Turner's on here, Michael Moorcox on here talking about the counterculture in Ladbroke Grove. Uh, I know the first 15 minutes doesn't have any swearing in it, so, and it's a BBC documentary, so if there's anything, I'll probably be able to spot where it's going to come from. But I'll just I'll set this rolling for 20 minutes, just because it's just interesting that it showed up as a conversation about music being played from a, from the back of a truck. That's exactly what Hawkwind used to do. Yes. Slattery was replaced by Hugh Lloyd Langton, and soon afterwards, the band went into the studio to record their first single. there was a cult following that had built up by that point. They sold records that sort of been, oh, this, this looks interesting. Maybe we'll make an album. So the first album, I think, had this captured the spirit of the band the most, for at the time, just played live in the studio, pretty much, the first album. <laughs> The music scene of the time was heavily influenced by what was going on in the hippie movement in America. But instead of the flower power of San Francisco, Hawkwind grew out of the urban sounds of Ladbroke Grove. I think the Ladbroke Grove scene and, and around that area was rather like Greenwich Village, I suppose. There was a lot of very creative people there. It was quite exciting, really. At one party, I remember introducing Arthur Clarke to William Burroughs, which everybody thought would be impossible. You know, Clarke, the scientific chap, and Burroughs, the, the beat. And they got on like a house on fire. They would not, you know, they just kind of stayed together the whole, the whole evening talking. So I've never been in an environment, certainly in England or Great Britain even, where music so defined the environment and a very different and eclectic kinds of music. It was really great, yeah, it was really fantastic. Drugs were very important, especially around Portobello. There was always lots of good marijuana, good hashish. Hash cooking, man, 16 traditional recipes, two shillings. Lots of great acid as well. But of course there was speed and a few other dodgy things that didn't do so well for people. And it was that period. It was, you know, it was it was at the crossroads between the 60s and the 70s. 